Beverly Pell was diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism. One of the four parathyroid glands in her neck is grossly enlarged, causing her hormone levels to go haywire. In the beginning, I didn't realize that an enlarged parathyroid could cause some of the problems that I've been experiencing. Depression, anxiety, uh, difficulty sleeping at night, uh, bone and joint pain. The most significant problems with primary hyperparathyroidism include bone loss in postmenopausal women. Sometimes people present with muscle weakness, bone pain, and others just have a number of vague complaints such as difficulty concentrating, severe fatigue, and the formation of kidney stones in a certain population of patients. The parathyroid glands are four very small glands located in the neck. They are so small that they were in fact the last organs to be discovered in mammals. What they do is uh, they uh, regulate the body's calcium levels uh, and they are the principal regulators of calcium for humans. Dr. Michael Ye and his team at UCLA have refined a minimally invasive technique to remove the diseased parathyroid gland in patients. It is actually a benign tumor, also called an adenoma. What I'm showing you here is the nuclear medicine parathyroid sesamity scan image. Dr. Ye employs sophisticated imaging techniques, nuclear medicine, and ultrasound, shown here, to zero in on the exact location of the gland. As it can be in variable locations. Dr. Ye makes a small penny-sized incision directly over the site. Gently pulling the surrounding muscles aside, he clips off the blood supply to the gland and removes it. Traditional techniques enter over the middle of the neck, often with a larger incision, then circle around to the site. But this newer approach is more direct and less invasive. So we're able to position the incision exactly where we need it. We find the most direct path to the gland. It's a smaller operation. It's faster. It involves faster recovery less injury, and the patients do very well. And really, that's the difference in the technique, which is allowing imaging studies to facilitate a less invasive operation. This is going to be several hundred times normal size. I didn't want a, like a ticking time bomb inside of me, whether it's for kidney stones. I've never had one, but I understand that they hurt like crazy. I don't want osteoporosis. And if this has anything to do with depression, anxiety, and crankiness, if that can improve that, then I'm all for it. Beverly's operation will take about 30 minutes under general anesthesia. The surgical strategy in minimally invasive parathyroidectomy is to begin by making an incision which is very small, roughly the diameter of a penny. We isolate the parathyroid gland which we've spotted with the ultrasound. Okay, so that's, our, that's our target. It's going to be right there. They usually have a very delicate capsule around them that you cannot violate, otherwise the parathyroid cells can spill uh, and uh, can cause recurrent parathyroid tumors to form. So, there's the adenoma. What's most exciting about minimally invasive parathyroid surgery is that image guidance allows to, us to really focus down the exploration to uh, make sure that the operation is simultaneously safe, effective, and well tolerated by the patient. And I should mention that uh, we take great pride in the appearance of our incisions and it allows us to uh, have very small incisions. In fact, most of the incisions vanish and uh, people are not even able to tell that they had surgery. 30 minutes after surgery, Beverly is awake, pain-free, and the minimally invasive removal of her diseased parathyroid, or adenoma, has already had dramatic effects. Here, here it is, pre -op. Beverly's parathyroid hormone levels are normal. As you can see from a peak level of 250, it comes down within 10 minutes right. and down again to the final value at 30 minutes, which is 19, well within the normal range which also means the gland will no longer be leaching calcium from her bones into her blood supply and urine, and her calcium levels will soon be normal too. Her bones are relatively healthy, though she is starting to lose some bone in the lumbar spine, uh, and that pattern of bone loss is very typical for parathyroid disease, and what we know is after removal of the parathyroid gland, that that bone will be built back very quickly uh, within a year, and that sustained increase in bone uh, building lasts for up to a decade. Beverly stayed overnight at the hospital because she's from out of town, but today she is ready to go home. Just a little bit of marking pen here and a little antiseptic and that'll wash right off. Right now I feel ready to, to get up and start living the rest of my life. Oh wow, that, that's nothing. In my mother's time, in my grandmother's time, um, what I'm doing now would be impossible and the queen of the 
most wonderful country on earth couldn't have had this done. When they have this operation, they're making an investment in their future health. My hope is that we'll be able to benefit more individuals and allow them to lead healthier lives because of it.